Hello everyone, welcome back to the workshop today. I'm going to show off a new forge that I've built that's a bit different from any forge I've really seen. It shares a lot of the similar characteristics, but it's a different idea altogether. So typically when you think of a forge, there are two different designs that you think of. There's the propane forge, which is essentially a box they put heat into. Propane forges are very convenient, especially for production work, but they can be kind of limiting. Uh, if you have a, a very large forge that requires a lot of gas, that can be kind of nice for big work, but they don't do very well with small work. Well, they do, but you're just heating up such a large area that you're really wasting uh, a lot of gas. Now with a coal forge, which is the other kind of forge that people typically think about, you use coal, a solid fuel, which is sort of, it's more versatile in many ways than a propane forge. However, there are drawbacks. Propane forge, you have a burner pumping in propane and air, which is then burning into the ch burning in the chamber, heating up the chamber, and doesn't heat up much besides the chamber. Whereas a coal forge, you know, you have your fire, and the more air you pump in, the more the larger your fire is. Now that's sort of the basics, but with a propane forge, you're really limited to the box, and with a coal forge. Unless you need to heat up a very large workpiece, you can put anything you want into a coal forge. You could have a corner of a large gate in a coal forge. If you need to forge a small portion of it, you could have a very large project in there. You could heat up the horn of an anvil and leave the rest of it coal. Whereas propane forges are far more limiting. You can't think outside the box if it doesn't fit inside the box. Um, now propane forges typically are cleaner. They do propane as it burns, it will create water vapor and water vapor will oxidize your steel more. Uh, that's why propane forges will scale more than a coal forge. Coal forges typically are a cleaner burning forge for the steel, but they do create a lot of smoke and you also have to manage your fire. So those are sort of the two different kinds. Of course, there are also oil burning forges, diesel burning forges, uh, as far as liquid and gas, and on sort of the solid fuel side, there's wood and corn and even dung, I've heard. So there are many, many kinds of forges, but really you're limited to a box of heat or sort of a hot gravel, almost, with coal. Now... There is sort of a hybrid between these two called a chip forge. A chip forge takes the convenience of propane and the flexibility of coal and combines them. My chip forge is more or less flat with a burner on the bottom with a blower. that pumps heat upwards. Now to capture that heat so it's not just a burner going up, I've broken up some very hard refractory fire bricks to sort of simulate coal and also simulate or simulate coal with the effectiveness of the insulation in a typical uh, propane forge. Well, now that you guys have had a small crash course in kind of the two schools of thought for forges, I'm sure there are other designs. I know that with uh, propane forges, you can have a uh, side, you can have the burner coming in from the side, the bottom, the top, any direction really. Uh, there's Venturi forges, forced air forges, there are uh, oil burning forges, diesel forges for sort of the solid box and then for the solid fuel again, you know, corn and all that. But you can have side blast forges. I don't think there are any um, coal forges that have the air coming in from the top. That kind of 
doesn't make sense. I know there are downdraft forges though, side draft forges, all sorts. But these are the two basic ones. Venturi coming in from the top and heating up the box and then sort of a fist-sized ball of heat with a coal forge. The fist size depending on how much air you put in. So now that I've explained that and kind of explained what a chip forge is, let me take you guys outside and actually show you. So this here is my ceramic chip forge, well not my ceramic chip forge, but just my chip forge. It might not seem like much, just a pile of broken up fire brick. Below here is a small ribbon burner. You might be able to see it now, it's a ribbon burner. I used to use this in a small coffee can forge, but over time that little forge was just way too small and it wasn't versatile enough. So I stuck it in here. This forge, or this burner rather, puts out an incredible amount of heat for how big it is and it doesn't use a lot of propane. Uh, especially whenever it's covered with these refractory fire bricks, it really keeps in the heat. It damn near gets to a steel melting temperature down there in just a couple of minutes. Now, whenever I said that you can't really put a larger project into a propane forge, that wasn't strictly true. If you only had a forge that could heat up maybe a four inch section of this bar, then you could use that forge to heat up this bar. Really where a coal forge or a chip forge like this comes into its own is really big projects where you need to heat up the middle of it. Say you wanted to heat up this part of a spring and your forge wasn't big enough to fit it in there. Maybe you could shimmy it in there and put it in front of it, but that just wouldn't work very well. Whereas with a forge like this, put it down in there like that, cover it up with the fire brick and Bob's your auntie. So. I'm going to turn this, a little chunk of this spring, into a razor because I don't think my little disposable razor is going to take off my Amish beard. So I'm going to fire it up and show you guys just how well this works. This brick is a little bit too big to be forging with. It's, um, takes a lot of heat to heat this stuff up and it moves around much more than stuff that would be uh, smaller chunks of fire brick wood but it does work very well and over time I imagine this will break down so I will kind of get a better feel for how large I want my fire brick to be so now that it's uncovered and I've made sure all the holes are unclogged that's a that's one other sort of the downside of this type of forge is stuff will get into these little holes and clog it up and then you know it won't the blower doesn't have enough force to really blow everything out so every once in a while I came in here with a vacuum and kind of vacuumed out all of this trash that's in the holes so the blower itself is on right now I don't think you can hear it but Whenever the fire is turned on, that's whenever it kind of gets loud.
that's been the first project with the new forge. It works very well. It's very similar to a coal forge as far as I can tell. I have no real experience with a coal forge, but from what I've seen and from what I've heard, this feels very similar. Nice little straight razor out of a chunk of coil spring. There is an issue where it will make this horrendous noise and have a lot of the, the more flame than usual. I don't know what happens or what causes that. It makes a um, sort of a wub -wub 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 noise. I kind of think that that's just too much propane or that is caused by some of the holes being blocked. What causes it, I don't know. It doesn't hurt anything. I just turn the gas down and then I bring it back up. It could be too much gas. Um, yeah, again, I don't know. Um, as I play with it, as I understand it and learn this forge, um, I will figure that out. And also, for some reason, these uh, fire bricks, whenever they get warm, too hot to touch, they get a green hue, whereas the colder ones don't. Might be because they're from a nuclear waste disposal plant. Hopefully this straight razor doesn't give me cancer. So, thank you for watching up until this point. Stay tuned for the next video. Like and subscribe if you liked it. And have a good day.